It's a good escape when you're sitting in that ridiculous environment. Start daydreaming about river trips and fishing and thinking back on past trips and thinking forward towards future trips. Sitting in traffic, you get a lot of time to think, you know, what's the next trip I want to do? What's, you know, when are we going to be able to go back? And the campsite is actually where we're going to stay this weekend is the first place I camped on the Flint River. It's a, it's a very special spot for me. It's almost uh, more like family than it is, you know, friends. We've all fished together our whole lives. And Pretty much I've fished with Andrew and Peeler. They're like the first ones I ever fished with. Known Andrew, gosh, since freaking existence, just about. Throughout the years, we've just kind of all came into sync with one another. Our styles really fit really well with one another. You go down the river, it's it's a, uh, oh, it's like a, a well-oiled machine. Oh man, it's fun. Now. People might look at it as a little on the outside of dysfunctional and all over the place, but it usually comes together pretty good. A lot of trash talk. He's the best fisherman I have. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to say probably, uh, probably me. Me, all day. Yeah, and Cody's, Cody's going to get up here and say him, and Peeler's going to say him. Now, Andrew's good. Andrew's taught me everything I know just about, but put in a little bit of time of my own, I got a few little tricks and secrets he don't know. They get more similar the older they get. I'm just here for the good times. Peeler, man. Me and Peeler have been best friends since kindergarten. You know, we've known each other our whole lives. He's pretty much the middle child of the family. Long, lanky, clumsy. Peeler is an extremely good fisherman. Peeler could outbeat me on some lakes. Trip over a, an invisible line. Oh, out right here on the river. Oh, I got him all day, both of them. I only know Cody by default, um, just because he's Andrew's little brother. Cody, I heard you said I was washed up. Yeah. So I'm going to proceed to kick your ass. Cody is the comedian of the group. Cody Wade, welcome to Jack. Yeah, that was cool, wasn't it? Cody Wade, Saturday, clap. Knot tying tip, one on one. Cody Wade coming at you. Do something like that. He's got a, uh, an undeniable confidence that you can't just get. Like, you have it. You either have it or you don't. Put you running through there one time. Slobber on a little bit. You're good to go. Sometimes. I honestly believe that if Cody did nothing but fish, he would be an extremely high quality angler. Oh, I hated him growing up. <laughs> we had a pretty good childhood together. We bass fished together. And I hated him growing up. He hated me. Didn't always get along like any brothers would, but he was the spoiled brat. Here's we're getting older. We uh, became pretty good friends, got real close together. And over probably the last five years, we've gotten real, real close. You got a good decision maker in Andrew, the older, wiser, and then the reckless young beast that is always pushing the limits. It's a pretty good duo. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely the... Uh, Andrew's a good guy. He's been a huge inspiration uh, in my life, really. I don't know, the, the getter of the group. Try to make sure everything's organized and ready to go. Okay. Man, that is debatable. <laughs> I can't get too sentimental, because then he's going to see his video and he's going to think I like him or something. Peter's more like the mom. I'm just, that, that, that's fair. <laughs> you know, the more time you get to spend here, the better off you are, to be completely honest. It's, it's kind of strange. We, uh, we've all got, you know, like this one float that's always been really special to us. And, and uh, the one we're going to do is, is probably my favorite or one of my favorites um, for sure that we're going to get on this weekend. Overnight trips, you don't rush. You just kind of sit back and go slow, enjoy. You don't have the distractions like you do at home. You can really, really just enjoy being with one another and, I go down there and catch 50, I catch 50, that's great. If I go down there and zero, oh well, I'll get them tomorrow. It's not like a big part of like me as much as it is Andrew and stuff. It's, it's a nice place to go camping. We catch a lot of fish here. That's not what gets me going, the fact that we're here and you know, enjoying the heck out of this. I mean, what a natural resource, right? But it's such a unique fishery uh, with the shoal baths uh, that we have here. So the shoal bass it is a very unique species of black bass native to the ACF River Basin. This is the only place in the world that you can do this. Growing up, our dad got us fishing for trout in North Georgia, and then we grew up farm pond fishing. When I found out about shoal bass, you're bass fishing in trout-style water. First time I caught one, man, I was hooked. Crazy. 
You got largemouth bass all over the country, and a shoal bass, nobody would really know what they are unless you're from around here. 14 inch fish eat 10 inch swim baits. They're a lot of fun to catch, a lot of fun getting to the places that you catch, catch them. I mean, you can't drop a boat in and you know just crank up your big motor and just run to where they are. It takes a lot of work, a lot of time. Started off doing it out of canoes when we were growing up, graduated to those and have been fishing out of some pretty impressive boats since then that have made accessing them a lot easier. There's been a lot of dumps, a lot of lost gear in the river, lots of flipping, lots of almost drownings. <laughs> so you just kind of got to, you got to flow with it and learn what not to do. And I think I started out on like a nine foot kayak, something like straight off the shelf. A lot of cell phones drowned and tackle boxes at the bottom of the river. Since, uh, since then, we've gotten a little better at it. Stress to the max. Can't you tell? Oh man, got a flipper. How's the ass hand of my kayak? I don't know what's going on. This is a super short float. I mean, I've done this float a ton of times in a day, but breaking it up when you get to do an overnight trip, it's uh, they're a lot more work, uh, but the reward's a lot higher. An overnight trip, when it comes to it, is it's a way to get away. You can go hang out with your buddies, go catch a couple fish. Just there's a song like the river just knows. It's it's kind of how I feel like the Flint. It just like. It's crazy how you can come attached or something. Yeah, I could be off the river and be home in my warm bed in 20 minutes. I mean, still like to stay out there and camp on the island, sleep with the mosquitoes, and you really get out there and gain an appreciation for, you know, the quiet. You know, it's um, just just a reset. Time and quality time are two different things. It's easy to spend time with somebody. All you have to do is be in the same room. It's not difficult. You don't have to talk. You can just stare at each other. The quality time when you can, you can let it go. You're focused on who you're with. And it, it's just a totally different experience. Out here, you do get quality time because you are disconnected. You, know, you don't have anybody else to talk to except the fish.